Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I got a really interesting question from a subscriber uh, yesterday. He asked, hey, you know, for just a recreational fitness enthusiast or recreational lifter, could they get the benefits of the bench press and the overhead press by just doing incline bench? Basically, could I just replace those and do incline bench and have everything balance out? Now, at first, that sounds like a, a good question because a lot of people consider the incline bench to be a better bodybuilding style movement uh, than the flat bench. Some people would argue for certain athletic endeavors that it's better. Um, and, you know, there's a certain amount of truth to that just because of the, the more focus on the upper chest, in some cases getting that deeper stretch on the upper chest. Uh, for a lot of people, it can be an exercise to really bring up the chest as a weak point, putting a heavy focus on the incline. Uh, in fact, there's Plenty of people who find incline benching to be an accessory for their bench strength. So that works. Uh, certain contact sports, uh, it could be argued that from a sports specific perspective, uh, certain sports benefit from the incline bench. But when we're talking about the general fitness enthusiast, um, I'm going to say no, the incline bench isn't going to be able to replace these two. And there's a couple of reasons why. Both of these lifts bring something to the table that the incline bench uh, doesn't. Now, the smaller of that's going to be the bench press because the bench press itself is a slightly superior overall mass builder. In other words, because you are, in most cases, able to use a similar range of motion, and if you were to train both your incline and your flat bench, most people are going to be substantially stronger on their flat bench. Um, the reason for that is that it does give more overall chest involvement in the exercise. Therefore, it lets you lift more weight. And again, anyone who's decently strong at both knows what I'm talking about. So because of that, it is capable of creating more overload on the upper body. You know, it's different when you can increase uh, weight used by reducing range of motion, but that's not necessarily the case on the bench unless you're arching a lot. So the point is the bench press itself allows for slightly better overall muscular development in the upper body compared to the incline. Again, assuming you're performing uh, the bench press correctly, it's easier to cheat on the bench press than it is on the incline. In other words, to lift your ass off the bench, bounce off your chest easier in some cases. I mean, a lot of guys can bounce the bench on the incline, but when you bounce the bench on the incline, it still tends to get a little bit better of a stretch on the chest. So if you cheat at the exercises, the incline might be slightly better. But for overall development, if you stay tight, you come down, pause on the chest, all of that, um, the flat bench is going to be a superior mass builder as long as your arch is kept in check. It's an overall superior mass builder. So you are losing out on that. Now, when we come to the overhead press, uh, the overhead press is going to be a superior shoulder exercise uh, to the incline. It's also going to involve more of the long head than the incline. So if a person is trying to maximize muscle gain with fewer exercises, taking the incline uh, to replace the overhead press is not going to be a good idea because there are, again, just like the flat bench has certain muscles that it the, works more than the incline, the overhead press also has certain parts of muscles involved in the incline that are worked harder, and that's mainly uh, the side and even the rear delts, the long head of the tricep. Now, another thing that you have to factor in a major advantage, a major advantage to the overhead press is the ability to do it standing. And anyone who's seen the data on the standing presses, when you stand on the uh, overhead press, it works more rear delt, it works more tricep and it works more core. It turns it into a full body exercise. It's a full body exercise and it creates much better joint stability than any sort of chest press does. So you have a tremendous number of benefits to be gleaned from doing the overhead press compared to the incline. Um, it's almost to the point to where because you have the ability to stand, it has the ability to create a more balanced shoulder structure. Uh, it better tricep development, all of these things, uh, and still work the upper chest. Maybe it doesn't work the upper chest quite as much as an incline, but it does work the upper chest. If you were looking for overall mass, overall athleticism, overall performance, if anything, you should be considering replacing the incline with the overhead press. 
right? If a person was trying to minimize the number of exercises they were doing, and that's kind of the question, hey, I've got two big exercises, I want to replace both of them with this one, well, you're gonna, you would get way more bang from your buck by the ability to do a standing barbell press than you're gonna be to be able to do an incline bench. It brings more to the table uh, because it doesn't just work the upper chest and those other muscles. It's a superior overall mass builder for the upper body. And be, again, because you can do it standing, it, it has a better athletic component. All right, it's a much better athletic component. Uh, and it does have better carryover to sports. Uh, if it, a lot of people will say, well, I, I think boxers or whatever should be doing, and football players should be doing an incline bench. Well, the overhead press brings a lot more to the table for those people than the incline does, because the incline allows you to lay down still. The overhead press, you can stand up. You can learn to, to engage those muscles while standing on your feet. Uh, so if you're looking for carryover into other endeavors, the overhead has better specificity of training, largely due to the ability to actually do it standing on your feet. And that's really a big deal. Uh, and furthermore, what you usually find too, people who learn to bench press correctly, who also put a heavy focus on the overhead press, tend to have less shoulder injuries from their chest pressing. Right, they tend to have less injuries from their chest pressing. And again, that's because the overhead press has the ability to create a more balanced and more stable shoulder girdle. And this is the sort of stuff that we have to think about. You know, when we're trying to be exercise minimalist, and you know, a lot of people who are gonna be recreational lifters who aren't necessarily trying to be competitive in anything, they just wanna get really fit, really strong, gain muscle, um, better body composition. We really need to sit down and compare when we start chopping out exercises or dropping two exercises to add one, you need to really think this stuff through and make sure that it is a good choice. In other words, are you removing more useful exercises to replace them with something that's actually less overall useful? And you've got to look at it that way. If a person is going to be an exercise minimalist, meaning they're only going to do a few exercises, you know, five, six, seven, eight exercises, uh, and that's all they're going to do sometimes 12 or six months at a time, you need to be very, very selective in those exercises. And that's the sort of reason you would chop two exercises out to replace it with one. And in this case, you're removing exercises that bring more to the table than the one that you're introducing. And the reality is, if you're going to be an exercise minimalist, and you want to focus on just a few lifts to gain your strength and, and changes in body composition, you need to pick very efficient exercises. You need to pick exercises that fill multiple roles. In other words, if you can only see one benefit to doing an exercise, it probably is not a good choice for a more minimalist routine. It's probably not a good choice. Uh, and again, it's a perfect example of comparing the overhead press to the incline. Okay, we could argue, well, the incline might work more upper chest than some other exercises. It's a good upper chest builder while still being good for the, the delts and triceps. And hey, that sounds pretty good till you realize that the overhead press is better for the delts and triceps than the incline is. The overhead press also brings uh, injury prevention balancing to your body. It has a better athletic carryover because it's standing on your feet. And that's a big thing to look for, a real big thing to look for. When we start discussing minimalist training and reducing exercise uh, variety, you need to be gravitating towards more exercises where you stand on your feet because they're going to build more muscle and more strength through your whole body. So you need to have actually a very small selection of exercises in your routine to where you aren't standing. Um, you know, you can get away with a couple. You can get away with one or two. That's probably reasonable if you're going to be a minimalist. But the vast majority of your exercises need to be exercises where you are standing on your feet. You're going to get a lot more out of it for your overall fitness, your overall athleticism, your overall muscle gains, your overall strength. There needs to be a heavy focus in that direction. And so the last thing you want to do is to take a major compound exercise that you can stand on your feet and replace it 
with an exercise that allows you to sit or lay down. That's the last thing you really want to do. Um, you know, the only difference is certain exercises you may not have a choice. If you want to work your chest correctly, there aren't many exercises out there that I, any I can think of that's going to allow you to stand on your feet and still get maximum chest involvement. So that's kind of the exception. Uh, but that's why you have the flat bench. And you certainly wouldn't cut out overhead pressing, particularly standing pressing for these, um, unless you were going to do a very high uh, exercise variation uh, routine. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.